AMD Pinnacle Ridge is here and finally we also have the opportunity to talk about performance numbers. Luckily I had the chance to fly over to Taiwan to visit Asus ROG because we wanted to do some record breaking with the new AMD Pinnacle Ridge CPUs. Pinnacle Ridge is the codename for example for the new Ryzen 7 2700X which is the CPU we used at Asus to break some of the records and we used it in combination with the new Asus Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard. We will have a new video and very detailed video coming up about this board in around two or three days where we, where we will go over all the features, explain everything that is new in this board because it would simply be too much for this video. Before we go over to the LN2 overclocking and the record breaking, we simply go over to air results first and see what we can expect from the new AMD Pinnacle Ridge CPUs. So to sum it up, the 2700X, for example, is around 3% faster than a 1800X at the same clock, but then the 2700X would also clock around 300 to 400 megahertz higher. That is what you can roughly expect from those CPUs. Now you can see an OC scaling chart in front of you, which I did with a 2700X CPU. I have to say that this is done with one of the very good CPUs, so basically you can expect around 100 megahertz lower for an average CPU. So what you can see in the blue line is the power consumption in watt, the red line is the maximum achieved clock in Cinebench R15, the line on the bottom is the Cinebench R15 score and then on the x-axis you have the voltage I had to use to achieve the clock. What you can see from this chart is that around 1.2 volt is very efficient for those CPUs. You can see at 1.2 v-core we hit around 120 watt power consumption at a clock of around 4100 MHz on all cores, which results in a score of around 1850 in Cinebench. So if we push the CPU a lot higher, which means around 1.4 v-core, it results in a power consumption of around 180 watt and we can achieve a clock of maximum 4300 MHz. And even if we push the CPU further, so if we push it to even 1.5 v-core, we can still only clock to 4.3 GHz. So my recommendation for best efficiency is around 1.2 to 1.3 volt. Really above 1.4 volt makes no sense. The CPUs are just getting a lot warmer. The power consumption is so much higher and you can mainly gain like two, three, four percent more performance which is really not worth it so just rather stay between like 1.2 1.3 volt and see what your cpu is capable of so if we compare summit ridge for example the 1800x which also features xfr with the 2700x which also features xfr on the new x470 motherboards we can now also adjust the xfr settings and that is probably the best new feature we have in pinnacle ridge so for example, if you take the Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard, you can adjust the XFR, which basically is nothing else than unlocking the power limit. So basically the CPU can draw more power, can clock higher, which results in a much higher single core clock, also in a much higher multi-core clock. So it's better than just doing the manual, manual overclocking where you have the same clock on all cores, which results typically in a lower single threaded clock than using XFR. So let's go finally over to the more exciting part, which is the LN2 overclocking. As I said before, before we do all the LN2 testing, we do all the preparation, which means we also have to do some binning, which means we do all the testing on air first, check how good are the CPUs, take the best air CPUs, test them on LN2. But before we can test them on LN2, we also have to prepare our hardware for LN2. So we take the Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard and then we remove all unnecessary parts. So we remove the heatsink, for example, we remove any kind of decorative shieldings and then we start with a preparation, which means we take some Vaseline, we heat up the Vaseline inside the jar, which makes the application a lot easier. We just take a heat gun, heat up the Vaseline until it melts and then apply the Vaseline over the board with a simple brush. And this way we can protect the board from any kind of condensation. Once we're done with insulating the board with Vaseline, we can start mounting our LN2 containers. So basically mounted the backplate first with the threaded rods, which are then used to mount the LN2 container. On the front side, we apply some paper towel just to catch any kind of drops from condensation and also to close any kind of gaps where air could be, because if there is no air, we cannot have condensation. After mounting the LN2 container, we finish assembling the rig. So we just plug in the memory modules, plug in VGA and all this kind of stuff. And then we can start cooling down our system.
Luckily, AMD CPUs do not have a cold bug, which means we can go full pot. That means we simply fill our liquid nitrogen container completely with liquid nitrogen until we hit the lowest temperature possible. Liquid nitrogen has a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius, so typically we can hit a pot temperature that is just around that temperature. Once our rig is cold, we can go into the BIOS and dial in our safe settings. So for example, on the top right corner, you can see that the BIOS is reading a temperature of minus 25 degrees Celsius. Simply the BIOS cannot read any lower, so that's not really correct. But as you can see, we're running a safe clock of four gigahertz. Also, we did performance BIOS CB15, which means that we will have a slightly higher score in Cinebench R15 with this option. And we're running a memory frequency of 3733 megahertz. For you at home, you should basically aim for a maximum of 3600 megahertz on the memory. Everything above usually just gives you a lot more trouble and doesn't give you that much more performance. We use a core voltage of 1.55 volt as a safe starting point and also SOC voltage at 1.25 volt. Memory is at 1.95 volt, which is required because we run really, really tight timings on the memory. Then we go to DG Plus Power Control, unlock everything that's possible in the VRM settings, for example, maximum load line calibration, disable any kind of power limits, have the highest switching frequency, and then we apply the settings and go to Windows. AMD CPUs are really easy when it comes to the extreme overclocking. So basically once we are in Windows, the only thing we have to do is increase the voltage because the CPU is as cold as possible. So we can just simply drag up the voltage. Typically 1.75 volt for multi-threaded applications, higher doesn't really scale and up to 1.85 if we just want to do a CPU Z validation, for example, without any load. After applying the voltage, we only have to increase the CPU multiplier to hit the frequency which we need. Our first goal was to break the Cinebench R15 record, which is currently held by the Intel Skydeck X 7820X 8 core CPU at 2739 points. We spent a lot of time trying to break the Cinebench R15 record with a 2700X. We came quite close, but we were not able to break it. So the final score, which we achieved, was 2627 points. Neo from the Overclocker was also there benching at a rig and he was trying different benchmarks at the same time and he figured out that GPU Pi and Geekbench 3 looked a lot more promising. In Geekbench 3, the current record was at 50,700 points, also with a 7820X Skylake X CPU clocked at above 6.1 GHz, which is absolutely out of reach clockwise for the 2700X Ryzen CPU. But then when we were running at 5.7 GHz, we realized that the score was better. So we achieved a score of 50,800 points in Geekbench 3, which is a new record. And what is really fascinating about this is that the CPU is clocking so much lower. So we basically 400 to 500 megahertz lower on the Ryzen CPU compared to the Skylake X, but we achieved a higher score. Neo then also tried GPU Pi, which looked even more fascinating. So the current record was also on a Skylake X CPU, 7820X, at 6.2 GHz. Then Neo was running it at 5.7 GHz and broke the record. So basically 500 MHz lower clock on the Ryzen 7 2700X was able to beat the 6.2 GHz Skylake X in GPU Pi. So that shows that the CPUs for the clock are really extremely efficient. For me personally, the most exciting part is always CPU Z because I just personally want to see how high can we push the CPU clockwise. Just disregard any kind of benchmark, just see how high can we push the clock. So again, we spend a lot of time testing individual CPUs, testing individual cores on the CPUs and see how high can we push the CPUs. So basically we used a voltage of around 1.85 volt pushed the CPU to over 6 GHz, which is an improvement over 100 MHz compared to the previous Ryzen. But the previous record was also on a Ryzen 5 6-core CPU, and now we have the record on the 8-core 2700X. So overall, it was a great week. We were able to take two records from Intel to AMD. We were also able to clock the CPU up to 6 GHz, which is a new record for the Ryzen CPUs. It was also quite a lot more relaxed to bench the AMD platform than the Intel platform because the Intel platform is on LGA and on LGA socket we typically have so many issues. If we go cold, we lose socket, socket contact, we lose memory slots. We never had all those troubles using the PGA socket on the AMD CPUs. So yeah, it was a great week, a lot of fun. I also hope you had fun watching this video. Take care, see you soon.